too dirty. Looks okay. Mr. Dan. Hello there. Welcome to the Monkey London channel. Thank you very much. Now, I actually know you from previous because you're a very yummy patron. I am indeed. <laughs> and you're a platinum patron as well. Yeah, I've oh got, I've been around for a while. You have, yeah. yeah. Big support of the channel, so yeah. massive, massive thank you. Thank you, man. Today, you brought down something which is pretty cool. Yeah, my uh, lovely 2008 Honda Civic Type R FD2. The FD2 Type R was only sold in Japan. This one I picked up with 33,000 miles. I was originally actually looking at a DC2 Type R, JDM. Um, but I couldn't find one that was, you know, good mileage for me and because uh, it's meant to be my daily. The Drift King himself did actually say this is one of the best Hondas they ever made. Yeah, yeah, he um, is a big fan of this car. I mean, obviously this excluding the Mugen RR, which is it's another level really, but as far as, you know, accessible Hondas and Type R's generally you can go, this has been proclaimed by him as one of the best. In fact, by a lot of people as one of the yeah. best. Because they actually made this car very similarly to the NSX. So. What people don't realise is that the way that they've put the chassis together is with a lot of adhesives and a lot of glues. Oh, crazy. Much how they made um, the NSX. So it's shaved like a ridiculous amount of weight off of this car. And I mean, look, the this car is the um, successor technically to the Integra line, so the DC5. Yeah. The difference in curb weight between this and a DC5 is only 60 kilos. Which is crazy if you think, because I mean, this does, even in appearance, seems a lot bigger. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've compared this to a DC5 side by side and DC5 is a little, little ditty thing. Yeah. This has got four doors, you know, actual rear seats, a working boot, and it only weighs 60 kilos more. And I've got two of my mates in the back seat of this, and they're both six foot four plus, and we had plenty of room. Yeah. We did an hour and a half journey and had no issues. So, yeah, it's definitely practical for what it is. And then, you know, when you feel like having a bit of fun, it's. Uh, you can do. Yeah. <laughs> Out the factory, what do these come with horsepower wise? Uh, I claim 220, 220 her horses, so it's pretty much the same as every other K20A. Um, I have yet to dyno it, so I do want to see what it's making before I start, you know, tweaking it. Mods, have you. Yeah. But uh, it, it feels like it's definitely over 200, it's got a lot of poke to it. This particular version of the car is a little bit pokier because of the final drive, so DC5 to EP3, their final drive was a 4.78. Three, I think something like that. This has got a shorter five and six, and the final drive on this is a 5.065, ah, something like that. So short, shorter ratio. Yeah, shorter ratio, better acceleration. <laughs> Is it quite hard to sort of resist driving it hard? Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> it really is. I, I, like I say, I got this car to be a daily and I thought, oh, you know, I'll be nice to it, I'll be, I won't beat on it too much. Two days, not even two days, three hours after picking up the car and I'm in VTEC everywhere I go, so you can't, can't keep out of it, it's yeah, so much man. fun. <laughs> and what is this Rev 2? Uh, eight and a half. Your FD2 isn't quite stopped, do you want to just run no. through some of the mods? Yeah, yeah, so it's had a, the previous owner of the car had a, a few things done to it, nothing serious. Um, so we've got a, a Mugen airbox, uh, this is not the, uh, the one off of the Mugen RR, it's the step down from that, it's like a panel filter with just a bit more of a, uh, a bit more space in the box, so it cool. does, you know, follow a little bit more air. Mugen, radio radiator cap uh, and oil cap and then carbon you can cover for the top of the engine there exhaust wise it came with a spoon n1 back box that i have obviously put on as you heard coming in yeah um and i also now have a toda test pipe on it as well i was out the other night in mexico um <laughs> <laughs> driving it and had a, a friend of mine record it and uh yeah when you hear it go past it, it does sound sound the absolute bollocks honestly <laughs>
wheels and brakes are all OEM, Dan? Yeah, all factory uh, wheels. The wheels themselves are made by Enki and the sizing on these is 18 by 8 on an offset of 60. They're really nice wheels, like if I've taken them off already, they're, you know, for what they are, they're actually quite light. Yeah. And the tyres? Uh, these are RE002s, Bridgestones. Are they factory? I uh, believe so, the factory spec, but these are a new set that got put on the car before I bought it. So. Nice. Yeah, no, they're really good tyres. It was quite shocking. I know um, a lot of the guys in Japan rate these tyres, you know, to no end. And what about the yeah. bodywork? Predominantly stock? Yeah, predominantly stock bodywork. Um, the only thing that's different about this is on the front of the car, um, the lip down the front is a Jay's Racing item. Um, I really like it. I think that it makes it look really aggressive. They actually do a, a full carbon bumper, though, with uh, with canards and a really nice under tray that I really want to get. Nice. But, that's like a couple of grand. Yeah. Yeah. And the rear spoiler's all, all stock? Yeah, this is all stock. Really sort of unique shape, isn't it? And that's what yeah. kind of really attracted to, to George and I getting one because it's a kind of a bit of a sleeper. No one really knows what these are about. Uh, it's 100% a walking sheep's clothing. The only thing that really gives this car away minus the wing is the front lip. If you didn't have that front lip off, um, and the standard bumper is actually really round. It looks almost identical to the hybrid, yeah. the FD1. When you were telling me this is actually the same chassis as the hybrid. They assembled this, as I was saying with the adhesive, so that it made it so much lighter. The hybrid is welded together, but it's the exact same panels. Okay. Just two different production lines. Obviously a little bit heavier because you've got, you've got uh, welds instead of resin yeah, exactly quick little look in the interior now yeah. first thing is it's super super clean obviously what she's done in done what 30 at the moment 34 oh something so it's very low mileage yeah, yeah. it's in such nice condition yeah i got really really lucky with it yeah, yeah. I, I wanted a low mileage car that i know I just i was gonna have any issues with i was gonna be the one putting in all the mileage so yeah no i'm really really happy with the, with the condition of the yeah. car and if you don't mind me asking dan what did you give for the car uh 18.5. 18.5, okay. 18.5, That yeah. seems to be about the sort of price point for cars with this kind of mileage. Yes, if you're looking for cars double the mileage, you're looking closer to like the 14 to 13 grand range, yeah. depending on where you're looking from. Yeah. I know Torque did have a couple of really nice white examples up for sale recently, um, both in Champ White, uh, both completely stock, I think, but they both had 60,000 miles and they were up for 14 and... 16 respectively obviously i've been doing a bit of research on these because i'm getting one for georgie yes. am i right in saying there's three different interior colors i believe so this interior color which is red carpets red centers and the seats and then the black um, externals there's another option where it's completely black interior black carpets um, black seats and then red carpets and i believe completely red seats, red seats. as is norm a normal thing with most hondas anyway yeah we've had a good little chat about the car down should we take it out for a little spin sounds like a good idea Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Got there eventually. <laughs> yeah, Dan, uh, Dan just realised what the arduous task of setting up all the cameras is. Yeah. First thing I'm going to say is you can, even though we've just driven around a car park, it's yeah. proper taut. Yeah. It's very tight. You can feel car. it. Yeah, yeah. You can really feel whether the they've... chassis just feels very rigid. Yeah. I think a lot of that has to do with the four doors because obviously having a central B pillar go across the the middle of the car really helps stiffen it up and just yeah. make it. Make it solid, I guess. More rigid, yeah. yeah. You've got a 400 horsepower R32 GTR. Yep, that's correct. What's the sort of? I mean, a very different car. This front wheel drive, four wheel drive. What, what sort yeah. of differences do you do you find? So, the main the main difference I find between the two cars is, well, obviously, don't get me wrong. Four wheel drive you've got a lot of traction. This car doesn't feel like it has any less traction than the Skyline. Really? Yeah. It's just it's just because it's like. It just feels like it's bolted to the road. Yeah. yeah, we've only been driving it for five minutes. I haven't even done VTEC yet, and I'm yeah. already sold. Yeah, <laughs> I, can just, I can just feel the can, car just feels amazing. It feels serious. It really, does. you can tell that it means business. Yeah. <laughs>
good, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I just thought to the speed limit in about, yeah, two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but you see what I mean about that final drive? It makes the oh, complete difference, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, man. It really, and it doesn't really sort of, you don't really get to a point where it kind of stops giving. No, it just wants to keep going. Yeah, it's bad, uh, man. Well, I'm really impressed with this. Yeah, man. Yeah, Georgie, if you're watching this, <laughs> sold. <laughs> Right, we're just going to do a little launch, show you guys what she's all about. Shift is just. Ah, <laughs> mate, can you just stop and I'm going to take this car home with me, please? <laughs> sure, I'll take this... 15 off your hands then. <laughs> no, you know what? I hate to say it, it's a close call, man. Yeah. The thing is, they're very different cars. The 15 is like a drift car, purpose built, yeah, and it's exactly. like a sort of a nice sort of techie day. No, so exactly. I, mean... I might just have both. <laughs> the audience it is february yep it is and february. it is 18 degrees today yep <laughs> which is not like the uk so big up global warming and heat death. <laughs> i knew the best thing today was to get you down because obviously we want to buy one and yeah. i knew as soon as you came down i drove it i'd be in love yeah and 10 out of 10 i am in love man this oh, is i'm, I'm glad man i'm glad no, I wouldn't say there's really many, I, I wouldn't say there's any front wheel drive cars that are better than this. I, in, in stock factory form. Yeah, in stock factory form, I don't yeah. think there is much that can hold a light to what this can do. Long term, the way Georgie and I are looking at this is, not only is it, is, it, is it a good car for her to daily, it's reasonable on fuel and stuff and it's yeah. practical, yeah. but it's also going to hold its value oh, and, and go up in price. Oh yeah, definitely, especially the Pearl. I mean, yeah, to my knowledge, I think there's only two of them at the moment in the country and obviously, as you've spoken to, talk have got two more coming in. You of course are looking at one. Yeah. That you're immediately you have a value there. Very right? limited. Yeah, yeah exactly. What about sort of long term plans? I mean, that, obviously with the K20 you got a lot of like boosting potential. Are yeah. You, do you think you'll leave it naturally aspirated, sort of keep it along the sort of lines it is now? I think I'm going to keep it NA. I mean, obviously boosted would be hilarious, Immense. as you're about to find <laughs> out. <laughs> you know, like this this thing would take off, but I have the skyline for that. You know, yeah. and I don't get me wrong. Like I love turbo boosting; is, it's hilarious. This is kind of as it is. It's kind of an animal in its own right. It's exactly. A car. Yeah, I I didn't realize a naturally aspirated car could be as quick as this. Yeah. So I think I'm just going to spend most of my time working on uh, building the engine. You know, maybe some ITVs go for a really high compression ratio. A little bit more power, but kind of leave the formula as it is, kind of. Thing. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I think just having it NA would be really nice. Like a really healthy. 280 NA, which is more than a cheap one, okay. I'd be happy with that. Yeah. You know, take a bit of weight Literally off the front and right. Yeah, it will disappear, yeah. Over now, George's yeah. getting a bit crazy. He was getting a bit, a bit <laughs> out of the hand, wasn't he? <laughs> but I must say, I mean, you know, 10 out of 10, I haven't really given many cars. 20 out of 10 is the score I normally give, but yeah. um, hats off to Honda because they have created something pretty special. Definitely, it's a masterpiece, like that yeah. engineering. 
Like I actually mentioned before, Dan is a platinum patron. At the end of this video, you actually see Dan's name in the end of the, uh, the credits. Without people like Dan, I would honestly struggle to bring all this content to you. It's a massive support. A lot of you know I don't make a massive amount of money on YouTube. Um, so yeah, I just want to say a massive thanks to Dan and all the patrons that have supported me up until this point. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this cheeky little video and we look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah.